everybody? Deborah Dondelinger here with a Tapping This Week podcast for the week of December, weeks of December the 16th and December the 23rd. And I've been talking about five healing principles, and I want to talk about the third one. And that is that you are guided by a loving and powerful intuition that is on your side. A couple of key points to this sentence. One is that you have access to a wisdom that that is on your side. So there's no outside critical force that's judging you or critiquing you. The worldview that I operate by and that feels more solid, and I know many others also relate to, is that the universe is conspiring for our good and is never against us. The universe hears our affirmative thoughts. And our intuition is our way of listening to ourselves. It's our way of connecting to our higher selves. Intuition is also paying attention to what feels right and aligned for you. So when you think about that you have access to and you're guided by a loving and wise intuition that's on your side, what do you notice? Are you like, heck no, that's not me. This intuition has abandoned me. I have, I have no access here. Or you're like, yeah, it's a good thing to remember. Or it's like, well, maybe that's for other people, but not for me. And one of the aspects about it, this, what I'm calling intuition, wisdom, guidance, is that if we, sometimes we have to wait, we have to let go of wanting to know and see when, and just let that answer show up. So right now on a scale of zero to 10, how, where 10 is hundred percent aligned and one is eh, not really, how in tune do you feel with, how much do you trust that you have access to, that you are guided by an intuition, your intuition that is 100% on your side, that only has your best and highest good in mind for you, that your inner guidance, your inner authority is here for your well-being. All right, let's tap on the side of the hand. As I consider this idea that I'm guided by an intuition that's on my side, I notice how good that feels, and I deeply and completely accept myself. As I consider the idea that we all are guided by an intuition, our own version of our intuition, and I don't have to know for someone else what's better for them. They know for themselves. I deeply and completely accept myself. As I relax into the idea that I'm guided by intuition that's on my side, I deeply and completely accept myself. I'm moving through the points, beginning with the eyebrow. Access to my intuition, side of the eye. I can always stop, pause, and listen under the eye. My intuition's on my side, under the nose. Yeah, but what about all those times I've made bad decisions? Chin point. What about all those times I didn't listen to myself? Call around. What about all those times I ran into a brick wall? What about all those times I wasn't warned? top of the head. What about all those times when something went bad? So stop there, relax your hand. So yeah, there's some contrast there. There's some aspects like yes, but and tapping that's called tail enders. So when you're working on something and you get a giant yes, but that is great stuff to work on. So if you came up with a yes, but of a time where something happened that you didn't like, that was dangerous or traumatic and your early warning system, your intuition was not active. See if anything specific popped into mind. The time when. The time when I didn't know better. Okay, on the side of the hand. Even though I remember this time when I didn't know better. And I feel vulnerable thinking about it. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel sad thinking about this time that I didn't know better. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I was young and I didn't know better. I'm open to the idea that perhaps it was the adults who didn't know better and it wasn't my fault. 
and I deeply and completely accept myself. Moving through the points, beginning with the eyebrow, the time when it didn't go well, the time when I was blindsided, the time when I was rushed and I couldn't pay attention, the time when I was completely taken off guard, time when I felt alone, the time where I felt like there was no one to help me, the time where events were way, way, way bigger than my resources at the time, the time when I was surprised. Okay, stop there and relax your hands. And I've actually named uh, three elements that um, make up a traumatic incident. And a traumatic incident is, um, I've heard it defined a couple of different ways, but it's when something happens that we do not have the resources to handle. We feel alone or unsupported. It's something, an area of our lives that's important to us, um, including our bodies, obviously, or our family members. And it's a surprise. So something bad can happen, but if we have resources and we feel connected and we feel like we have some power, it doesn't register in our bodies as a trauma because we're able to take action and move forward. What does this have to do with intuition? Well, when we're in a traumatic state, our intuition, our ability to listen is sort of gone, right? We're acting out of a different part of our brain. When we're in an emergency state, we are reacting and responding. We are not listening. So sometimes our intuition is very available to us and sometimes we're in a heightened sense of awareness or not awareness, alert. And our intuition is sort of obscured by the static. So when you think back to the time when something bad happened, can you see how your intuition didn't abandon you? It just couldn't make itself heard because other parts of your body, your nervous system were screaming louder. And now that we have the tool of tapping, our nervous systems don't have to scream anymore. Take a nice deep breath and come back to the idea that you are guided by a loving and powerful intuition that's on your side. How does that feel to consider? We're moving into two lovely archetypes that have to do with the love of self and then I don't know how to say it right. Finding the things that work for the larger picture, for the collective joy. We're looking at the 10th archetype and the 58th. I invite you to sink into this idea that you have an internal intuition that's guiding you to your greatest joy. And we can stop and let us, we can stop and listen, notice what feels better. Is this a yes? Is this a no? If you're a human design person, you can look at your internal authority or your outer authority How is your authority working for you? (sighs) And I did not time this message to be tied to um, the solstice or the the Christmas story, but I think of the guiding star um, from the three wise men we're following, and that's your intuition, your own internal guiding light that um, is on your side, wanting you to be more of yourself in a loving way. Uh, so I, I like that analogy, our internal guiding, st- uh, guiding light. As you notice, this podcast was for the week of the 16th and the 23rd. I'll be back to you at the end of this December. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful solstice and holiday week next week. Um, and until next time, thank you for tapping along with me. Bye. Mm-hmm.